trade. As Matt Stafford going from the Lions to the Rams, Jared Goff going back to the Lions, and then, of course, first-round picks involved that go to the Detroit Lions as well. And the L.A. Rams now are in a situation where the last time they had a first-round draft choice was 2016 with Jared Goff. And they're not going to have one again until, I believe, 2024 or 2025 uh, because of all the trades that they have made either you know out of the first round or getting other players. And they are just not going to have a first-round pick. But you know, one of the things that I saw that I didn't necessarily like that was out there in looking at this deal was, wow, the Lions got that for Matthew Stafford. What does that mean for Deshaun Watson? Now, one of the things that was not talked about with that take was the fact that the Detroit Lions are taking that massive salary that Jared Goff has off the Rams' hands. And I'm sure that that was a big part of the compensation package, whereas maybe the Deshaun Watson deal won't have something like that. So I just I think this wasn't one of those big overpay situations when you factor in the fact that the Lions did the Rams a favor in taking Jared Goff and that contract that he was given not that long ago. Yeah, there's there's one other aspect to this whole story that nobody's even talking about, and that is the Lions the solid by Matthew Stafford. He wanted to go to the Rams. You know, he, they could have traded him to the Panthers. There were about seven teams that were in on this, and there were, I don't know, multiple uh, places that offered multiple first-round picks but they did a solid by by Matthew by trading him to the Rams because that's where he wanted to go. Right, it's one of the reasons why they made this deal work like they did. And, and by the way, Jared Goff has won more games over the last three years than Matthew Stafford has. Jared Goff has been to the playoffs. Jared Goff has been to the Super Bowl. So it's not as if he is nobody. I know he's doesn't raise the temperature in the locker room. He's just another guy. And you want your quarterback to raise the temperature. So... Uh, I don't necessarily know, know that Matthew Stafford's that guy either. You know, Matthew's a great player. He's got a great arm. Um, you know, he doesn't have to really be that guy for the Rams. He's just got to be a guy that can make key plays on third down and keep the ball out of the other team's hands because they got personalities. They got Jalen Ramsey. They got uh, Aaron Donald. They got Cooper Cup. There's enough players there where Matthew Stafford, you know, should actually, you know, do very well out there in the Rams. Now, he only has two years left on his contract. And the Rams, by virtue of trading Jared Goff, have to pick up some of the dead cap money that Jared Goff would leave behind. Yeah. So the Rams are going to be paying $42.2 million for the quarterback position this year, $20 million for Matthew Stafford, and then $22.2 million in dead cap money. So the Rams do have a very large salary cap number at that position. Uh, in 2022, uh, Matthew Stafford only has $23 million in terms of a cap hit, meaning that Les Snead, the GM there, knows that that would be a year that they either extend his contract and they go back to the free agency pool and they start you know, signing free agents and things of that nature. But the interesting thing about the package that is going back to the Lions, it doesn't include a 2021 first round right. pick. Because the Rams don't have one, right? That's right. They traded that to Jacksonville for Jalen yeah. Ramsey. So it's basically two first-round picks that most likely are going to be late first-round picks. And those late first-round picks aren't nearly as valuable as the number two pick that the Jets have in this year's draft. That pick is worth three times or four times each one of those picks right. that, that the Rams sent to the Lions. So everybody, you know, oh, my God, first-round picks. No, not all first-round picks are created equal. When you have a top-five first-round pick. And that was in the Bill of Rights, actually. Yeah, yeah exactly. I appreciate that. Line. Yeah. And the thing about Jared Goff, over the uh, last year he had 17 turnovers in 15 games, and he, he had some injuries. And, you know, Matthew Stafford has had some injuries. Um, you know, but when I look at the Jets over the next two years, the 2021 draft and the 2022 draft, they have 17 total picks. In those drafts, they have two first rounders this year. They have two first rounders next year. They have uh, a number of fifth round draft picks because of trades like for Avery Williamson. They have three six round draft picks in 2022. Um, I mean, they are loaded for bear and they have the draft capital to, to go get Deshaun Watson, who, by the way, this weekend now scrubbed his Houston Texans 
logos and all of that other stuff from his social media platform. Yeah. All right, so a, a couple of things um, before I get to Deshaun Watson. One of the things I thought of with Jared Goff right away, I went back to Hard Knocks this past year, and there was a scene where he was out there in L.A., a young guy, big contract, won an NFC championship already, went to the Super Bowl. He's got this beautiful house out there in L.A. He's hitting golf balls off his balcony with his supermodel girlfriend wearing his jersey, and they're smiling in the sun before training camp one day. And now he gets shipped out to Detroit. Now, he ended up saying that, oh, I'm happy the team really wants me and believes in me. But, I mean, you cannot get from one high – to something else like that was not really expected. I mean, I understand there was some weird stuff at the end of the season with his thumb and Walford and everything else, but this was not something that at the beginning of the season he thought would ever happen, that all of a sudden his ass is in Detroit and Matt Stafford's in L.A. and he's got to start his career over. Uh, The other thing is, you know, Nick Casario in regards to Deshaun Watson, Nick Casario, the new general manager of the Houston Texans who came over from New England, came out and said, we have no interest in trading this player, meaning Deshaun Watson. Does that mean anything? We have seen two examples in New York where it doesn't mean anything. Joe Douglas said he wasn't trading Jamal Adams. Dave Gettleman said he wasn't trading Odell Beckham Jr. Both those guys got traded. So I don't know if that necessarily means anything. It could also be a way to drive up the price because they know that they're going to have to trade him and trying to get some sort of leverage back to the Texans where, you know, someone comes along, hey, I know you're not interested in trading them, but how about this package? And then maybe ups it up or sweetens the pot a little bit. But Deshaun Watson's going to go. I mean, I I can't – I don't see another route for him to stay there because the Texans aren't doing right by their organization if they just try to punish him there in Houston with the way that the rules are set up. Yeah, um, there's also one other aspect to this whole thing with Nick Casario. And and we talked about this, I think, a couple weeks ago. And I'll I'll continue to remind people that, you know, there's, there's politics involved here. So, you know, the Texans don't want to look as if they're trying to get rid of Deshaun Watson. They want Deshaun Watson to to continue to do what he's doing. Sure. And that's trying to force his way out. So when they ultimately do make the trade, you know, they can at least say to their fans, look, he didn't want to be here. And we ended up getting three first-round picks, a player, and maybe even a third-round pick. Who knows uh, what teams are going to be willing to give up. And Again, I go back to the Jets and the Dolphins. They seem to be the two teams that have the most to offer. And if they wanted to take on a quarterback like, say, a a, a Tua Tunga Bailoa or a Sam Darnold, they could easily absorb their contracts because they're still on their rookie contracts. So it makes a lot of – it does make a ton of sense for Houston to play the game the way they're playing it. Makes a ton of sense. Yeah, to play the game the way they're playing it from a PR standpoint – and then let Deshaun basically implode this whole thing. So then they have no choice but to trade them. And then, you know, when they do get back a haul from whoever gives it to them, uh, then they'll feel like, you know what, we did the right thing. And I think the fan base will understand that they did the right thing. So, you know, saying all of that, here's one thing I do know about Deshaun Watson. We talk about, you know, raising the temperature of your, your locker room, raising the temperature of your team. You know, he, you know, to, to put it mildly, he is – uh, a top five player in the NFL. He walks into the Jet locker room or the Dolphin locker room. He changes those teams immediately. And and everybody looks at them differently. The players that play with him feel differently. Oh, the, the coaches, fans, coaches, the league, the, fan, the everything, marketing, everything. 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 Yeah. So he, that's why he will be so valuable. And then once he gets into the locker room of the new team, if in fact they trade him, whatever they traded to get him, it's not going to matter because he is going to make them exciting and he is going to change the dynamic of the team. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.